On this hunt, I'm taking my dad on his first Roosevelt elk and Sitka blacktail hunt in Alaska. But don't worry, I have a few tags of my own as well. My plan is to help out my dad before striking out in a different direction to try to get a deer of my own. Forget the elk, these things are easier to pack. That's a big buck. I think many hunters can relate to this style of hunting. Going out and sharing the overall experience while still having the opportunity to venture out on your own. I'm pretty sure he's piled up right down here. That was awesome. I'm back. Come up here, boy. Welcome to Mordor. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. We're lazy now. This thing's a tank. It's a bad day right there. You ready? I'm ready. Where's the throw up bag at? <laughs> you don't mind if I do a little filming, do you? Oh, no, no. Any hunt in Alaska is an adventure. The travel alone makes the remoteness of the location apparent. From bush plane flights to boat rides, by the time you set foot where you are hunting, you know you are really out there. Having been in this general area before, I really just want to focus on showing my dad an amazing hunt. After getting dropped off by my good friend Birch Robbins, Kodiak Raspberry Remote Island Lodge, we plan on spiking out the day before the season to locate the elk. We went in light with a small tent in case we have to walk out or can't get picked up because of weather. The day before the season, we find ourselves in the perfect location, elk all around us. These animals are big and require many days of packing meat. The further they get from the ocean, the more days it'll take to pack back to camp. So where's my movie thought ball oh, right here? Can you see him through the scope? There's like a yellow bush in that group. As opening morning arrives, the elk have moved off and are nowhere to be found. In this big country, moving out of this basin means we are out of luck. Or we can try to get up top or really be above just a bit. Just above the, the bush. Sit up a little. You'll we'll see him. There, he's moving down to the right now. With the elk gone, we quickly switch our sights on blacktails. We spot a great buck in the grass and don't have to think twice about abandoning the search for elk.
Now did the elk come out? Forget the elk. These things are easier to pack. That's a that's a big buck. <laughs> Sweet. That was a really big buck, actually. Nice. Cute text. I don't know why. He scared me that. I wanted his gun to shoot him when he was facing me because it's like oh, he wasn't home. facing you. He, his oh. body was just lower in oh. the grass. I was gonna get some grass shot. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna mow some lawn with that. <laughs> All right, walk over there. I'll guide you over there. All right. With my dad's first blacktail on the ground, this buck is so much more than just a great set of antlers or some meat we'll take home. As the weather moves in, it becomes apparent we are not getting picked up when planned. This deer will be what we live on till we get picked up. The much needed hot meal, not to mention the added feeling of security, knowing that we have enough food to wait out any storm. This is what hunting is all about. Sustenance, adventure, and the experience of sharing a campfire in the middle of nowhere with those closest to you. Two bucks fighting up in that, up in that draw, the top. Just kind of sparring. Can you see him? I see the two you're talking about that are starting to head down that are on that ridge, off the left. Look up high, like up almost to the top in that little basin to yeah. the right, and you'll see two bucks just sparring pretty hard. There's actually some decent one, two. There's five bucks up high and two or three down low. I see the one coming out of that hole to the left. Yeah, just coming up. I wonder if they're all moving down toward the beach. No, I think they'll stay up there. They're feeding pretty good. You know, maybe six bucks up there. I'm gonna take a closer look. It's almost water skiing water there. Yeah, calmed down really. The waves are still pretty big though. Let's head over there. Let's go back. Let's 
got a couple tags. One will be big enough. The buck should be right up the top of this hill. It's a pretty good climb from the bottom. I'm pretty sure they're right up here. On the way up the mountain, I split from my dad during the steep climb and find the buck still up high on the ridge feeding. After the shot, the deer have no clue what happened and go straight back to feeding. I back out and drop down the mountain to grab my dad, having him leave his gear and come up to my rifle in the hopes that the other big buck in the group stays there. That one. Yeah. If you have ever hunted with me, you will know that at some point in the hunt, I will mess with you, my dad included. I could not resist letting him think he got the bigger deal. Good job. Huh? Sweet. You sure it's a four point? I don't know. I think I shot the small one on accident. What? But I wanted to save a tag for the bow, so I'm, I'm glad I saw you walking up. Well, uh, what do you mean? The... I shot, I think it's a little four point. Well, but I don't understand. If you shoot a bigger one, you can't use the bow. I only have two tags. Right. I didn't see that one. Oh, I still oh. got mixed up. Okay, I'm right. Well, I didn't get them mixed up. I couldn't tell. And they were like, I had the sun in my scope. And I thought, okay, that I saw the four point. Then they walked out and I just put it on one. It's and then I saw the four point after I shot. So I'm pretty sure I shot the wrong one. I didn't have a very good rest. I know. I just want to shoot. I know. I just shot one from there. <laughs> While you were walking up, I shot one right I, here. I'm glad then you I did. I came down and flagged you. Okay. Like, Put her back down. Get up here. I would rather do this walk than any of those through the bushes. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't bad. It's steep, but I think we can go right down here. As long as they do roll, we'll be okay. So, we got to go. All right, let's do it. We'll find it. I wouldn't want to come down that ridge we came up though. Huh? That ridge we came up was steep. We got a nice sunset in the background. Oh, oh yeah. look at these two light nice. guards. Yeah. Ooh. Crap. Not let him roll. He's in a perfect place to skin. Nice four by four. Young buck though, but he looks good. Nice buck. Yeah. Really nice. It's cool. Man. Some photos here. Um, let's uh, let's go find yours real quick. Okay. Oh, he's a two by four. Yeah. My second black tail. It's a nice bus. It's pretty cool. Okay. Is it worth getting stranded? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two big bucks. Oh, crud, man. Now now the work starts. Yeah. Nice oh, this is totally yeah. worth it. Yeah, this is. I like him. He's got big eye guards. I felt like Gilligan's Island. We're coming out for a one night stay and we got three. But we got three or two bucks. Three bucks. Three bucks. One per night. Yeah. <laughs> We aren't going hungry. Uh, That's good. Cool. Sweet, yeah. Good, good job. job. Thanks. Love, Love you too. <laughs> oh, he's nice. Holy smokes. They're big bodies. They're really big bodied. It's crazy. We get some photos and some video. Their necks are just... It's almost like they're rotten. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I hope I brought a flashlight. I think I'm going to need it. Yeah, I brought my dad in here for an elk hunt. 
And it was just one of those things where the elk did not cooperate. We thought we were gonna do it right, camp on them the night before the season, hunt, and then hopefully head out. Well, the weather changed and we ended up staying three nights when we were only planning on staying one night. Getting picked up tomorrow, third day, and it's awesome. Got a nice buck, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. This whole trip has just been pretty unbelievable, really. Well, no hunt would be complete without a nice long pack out in the dark. What do you say, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> Is it midnight? I want to go home. He wants to go home. <laughs> He's been stranded on the island for three long nights. He's ready for home. No. I we had fun. Any other way. I wouldn't either. That was a great time. Those stars look cool. This is a steep mountain though. My camera's all fogged up. That's just condensation. That looks terrible. Alright. I don't think the focus works. Ah. We've got a couple groups of deer right up on the ridge behind us. I've got my bow today and I'm going to climb up to the top. I think me and my dad are going to split up so I'm going to go up there to the top see if I can't try to find one with my bow and then we'll just meet back up on the beach this evening. By the time I climb all the way up there who knows where they'll be if they stayed put or if they kept going. Solo hunting isn't always initially heading out alone. Many times we are hunting with friends or family and strike out for the day in opposite directions. I think of this as a form of solo hunting a lot of hunters can relate to. Spending the day on the mountain, hunting and packing by yourself, so you meet back up at camp at the end of the day, share stories, and even get a little help packing out the meat. You not only have the excitement of your own hunt, but the anticipation of hearing how your fellow hunting party fared. There are many forms of hunting alone, from tree stand hunting on a small farm, to long solo missions into the wilderness, to day hunts where you split away from those you're out hunting with. I've got a pretty nice buck bedded at the top of the mountain. There's a big rock pile and he's bedded maybe, I don't know, 40 yards below it at the most. The trouble is I gotta go all the way around the mountain and pop back over. There's a lot of does and other things in there. And the wind's not really perfect, it's just moving different directions. So I'm gonna hustle up there, and try to use that rock pile if the wind is good. If not, then I'm just going to have to improvise, but i got to move fast because I'm going to some daylight. As I near the top, I spot some deer. I don't see the buck I'm looking for, but I assume he's still bedded. As I creep up to where I think the buck should be, I catch the tip of his antler behind a small spruce in the grass. I grab the camera and sneak to within 30 yards, ready and waiting for the deer to stand.
creeped up and he was bedded there and I just saw his antler tips. Nice buck. I'm pretty sure he's piled up right down here. That was awesome. There is no more rewarding feeling than walking up to a buck you took with a bow. To climb the mountain, sneak within range, and make a good shot, you walk up to the deer knowing you're going to be bringing home some incredible meat. But beyond the meat and the hunt lies the experience of being in the wild with my dad. Of course I enjoy hunting alone, but the time spent in the field or in camp with those close to you is invaluable. I think many hunters can relate to this style of hunting, going out and sharing the overall experience while still having the opportunity to venture out on your own.